What's up, people? It's your man, Irvin Lover, coming from the Airmobile. Watched the game last night against the Atlanta Hawks. Lakers went three in a row. This this is going to just be a quick, uh, just a quick, this thing going to take 20 minutes. The Lakers, right now, they're playing pretty good. Um, a couple guys didn't really have a good shooting game, but they made up in different areas. Like, for instance, KCP had a 34 game, uh, the previous game. This game, I think he went four for 12 or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, I think he, uh, well, might be, I forgot what it was, but he had 14 rebounds. Uh, Julius Randle, still freaking killing, man. I mean, I'm now I know this is usually my Monday segment. I said I got something to drop something every Monday because I got a lot going on. I'm going to drop my weekly probably sometime this week because I'm I have a lot to talk about, especially about Julius Randle. But like I told you guys, man, you know, this is the main reason why me personally is I believe in these young players. And that's why I get upset when we make trades and this and that. I understand a lot of people they want, you know, the band aid fix up real quick. They want to get the superstars. They feel like with one superstar, we can be, well, one or two superstars, we can be a legit contender. Um, and, and one thing I want to say like this, man, I mean, I understand, you know, that's what the Lakers' legacy is built on, you know, always getting free agents, getting superstars from other teams, stuff like that. I understand that. But if we go back and look, like I said before, we go back and look at the year when they got Carl Malone, Gary Payton, Kobe and Shaq, we didn't go far. Steve Nash, Dwight Howard. Artest, Paul Gasol, Kobe, didn't go far. Sometimes, man, and, and I know a lot of y'all might disagree with me, man, but sometimes it's best to just build through your own freaking... See, this this, uh, this, this is what really upsets me, man. It's like the last three years, I really like, I, I watch comments, I watch some of the uh, reporters, and it's like we'll, we'll give like our, our home players, our players that are there, we'll give them like a little portion of respect. And I'm not saying everybody. But I'm just saying, as I observe and watch the media, we might throw something about Brandon Ingram, something about Lonzo Ball, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Kuzma. Kuzma actually was getting more hype than Brandon Ingram at the time at the beginning of the season. But then, we give a lot of hype towards PG-13. And me, personally, Brandon Ingram is 20 years old. He will succeed, over, over, well, over-exceed freaking PG-13. He's going to be better than him. Y'all can disagree with me all you want. Once the young dude gains some weight, um, start night down his free throws, be more disciplined when he's going to the paint. He's getting better with it. Cause usually man, when he first started off, he was real like, uh, he was just like forcing a lot of stuff. Like he was like going in there, uh, like almost like Julius Randle going there, attacking, drawing fouls. And like I said before, the difference between him and Julius is that Julius got more weight on him. So when Julius run into somebody nine times to 10, they're going to fall flat. Whereas Brandon Ingram running somebody when he's going to the paint nine times to 10, he's going to bounce off of him because of his weight. But, I'm telling you, man, the Lakers, hoping, I'm hoping the front office, I really hope they resign Julius Randle this offseason, man. Uh, me and Lakers show was talking about it. We were talking about how Dallas is going to really go after him hard. Now, remember, Dallas gave um, gave Barnes, I think, $94 million for four years, something like that, four or five years. Do not think that they're not going to throw $18 million at Julius Randle. He's a hometown, uh, you know, he's from Dallas. And it'd be good for them because, man, I mean, Julius is like one of them old-fashioned type players, man, that brews you down low like a Moses Malone type player. And a lot of today's fans don't really, they never really see physical players like that. They see a lot of finesse players, you know, besides dunkers. They see a lot of finesse players, you know, guys that, you know, that can, you know, dribble real nice, cut through the crowd, you know, through the, um, you know, the, uh, the defense, you know, make them, them crazy layups and stuff like that. But I'm old-fashioned, man, and I like the way Julius Randle has been playing, man, since he's been starting. He's been... Even when he wouldn't start, when he was coming off the bench, and I said it before that, you know, I didn't like him coming off the bench. You know, some fans, you know, kept saying, as a matter of fact, some in the comment section, you can go back and look, kept saying that he should come off the bench. He should come off the bench. I said, no, he need to start, man, because we don't have no physical presence in that starting five. Everybody's finesse players. No physical presence. And then as soon as Julius Randle started starting, we started winning a good portion of games. Even when Jordan Clarkson was there, we were winning a portion of the game because they were utilizing both of them. But Julius Randle has been the anchor of that team, man. And if, and if nobody's not seeing, I don't know what to tell you guys, man. The guy's playing like he's playing crazy. Somebody stated that, oh, you know, he's going he's going to eventually die down. Uh, hey, eventually he's going to cool off or something. No, no man. I, I don't believe that, man. Because the thing that y'all fail to realize, this is not Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak. And I don't have no problem with Jim Buss and Mitch Kupchak because they did give us championships when they were here. Yeah, they made some bonehead, mis bonehead mistakes. And some of they did out of – some of they, they, they did – in order to get back at uh, Genie Bus, I share that in my old videos. But the difference between them and Magic Johnson is Magic Johnson had that no play, 
you know, no, 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 no play type of con, no, no play type of um situation where he wants you to come and play. He stated that when he first got here. You know, if you're not coming ready, if you're not going to be ready to play, we're not going to play you. Simply put, you know, you got to come in shape. Well, I want y'all to lose that body fat. You know, you know, you know, so you could be up and running. Because the whole point, Magic Johnson, he want to bring back Showtime 2.0. That's why he went and got Lonzo Ball. For the simple fact is, right now the Lakers are number two in fast breaks behind the Golden State Warriors at 17 fast breaks per game. Golden State is at 20. Um, and another thing, also, I want to shout out too is that. When we do a lot of fast break because we move so fast, we're going to get a lot of turnovers. That's what's going to happen. We're not going to get we, – we're going to hover around 15 to 20 turnovers a game. That's going to happen because the Lakers move too fast, and sometimes they move too fast. They outplay themselves sometimes. But that's the reason why I say I love Julius Randle. I love what he's, the energy he's bringing to the team lately. Um, Kuzma has been in the slump. He ain't really been shooting well. He had buckets when they count, but he ain't really been like – he ain't really been doing what he'd been doing like back in a couple, a couple months ago. And I would like to get Kuzma back to that, you know, to that Kuzma. But right now we win the games, which is cool. We won three games. We beat Atlanta. Atlanta is like, they're they going downhill. Atlanta, I don't understand Atlanta, man. You know, a couple years ago, they were just one of the top teams, went over 50 games, and now they're going backwards. And that's what happened when you start to give up on players so early. And that's why I told fans, you got to start looking at these other teams, too. They had young players on their squad, young players or, or veteran players. And instead of building and continuing to build, they gave up too early because everybody tried to chase them go to state warriors. And every time you chase the go to state warriors, then you end up like the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm just being honest. You end up like the Cleveland Cavaliers where now you're at a point where you're trying to figure out what is your identity because you're not winning no games. So that's, that's what's going on with, with teams now. But I'm talking about the Lakers. They really got to, um, they got to go after, they, they got to resign just right at the end of the season, man. You know, Stop. We got to stop focusing on these superstars. I mean, that's why everybody can talk about, you know, superstars, superstars, superstars. Listen, if that's what you guys like, hey, that's your opinion. I'm not, I don't have nothing wrong with it. I, like I told Lake Show, the biggest problem with the Lakers is if Lou Wong, if he if he'd actually did the rotation right at the beginning of the season, started Julius Randle at the beginning of the season, um, time management, you know, putting the right hands in at the right precise time when somebody's hot, not taking them out and sitting them down just to make sure somebody else get playing time. And made these guys disciplined on their free throws. Because if you notice, since the All-Star break and all going back, before the All-Star break played, the five games before the All-Star break, they were hitting free throws. Why? Because Lou Walton finally, okay, y'all going to start running now. Uh, you're going to start hitting, taking all these free throws. This is something that should have been done at the beginning of the season. When you see the situation where, okay, this is where they're weak at, we're going to fix these things. You know what I mean? If they did this at the beginning of the season, like I said before, and I still stick with it, the Lakers would have been hovering around 500. They'd have been hovering around 500, and they probably, if you think about right now, they're only, what, eight games out of 500? I mean, eight games from getting reached of 500? Look at the last team. I ain't going to tell you, but look at the last team that's in the eighth spot, and look at their record. We're not, we're, we're right there, but just imagine if, if, and also going back to Magic Johnson, if Magic Johnson wouldn't spoke about, you know, trading players and all that to disrupt what we had going on, then we had a nine-game losing skid, we could have won. I'm telling you right now, we would be hovering, right now we'd be sitting at probably 500 right now. If they had to discipline them with the free throws, turnovers, like I told you guys before on the video, like I think eight videos back, I said turnovers, we're not really worried about it because if the Lakers, if you look at the Lakers turnover last night, the last night, night before, the Lakers had a lot of turnovers, but they still found a way to win. They all rebounded, man. I think freaking Jules had, I think, I think yeah, 10 boards. Um, Ingram had 10. Ingram freaking, like I tell y'all, man, Ingram is playing good, man. I like him in that two guard spot, man. I mean, while in the backcourt. Since he's been playing backcourt, man, he's comfortable. He's playing good. And this is the main reason why. Lou Walton is bringing Lonzo Ball slowly through because he. I'm, I'm looking at it like this. Eventually, it's going to be Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball in that backcourt because uh, Lou Walton's starting to see it. When he had that small forward spot, he struggles. But when he had that, that backcourt, and it's, I think in a month of February, ain't like what, 19 points? Shooting 50% from the field, 50% from the three-point arc, averaging five assists, I think, what, one or two steals? He plays good at that shooting guard spot because people fail to realize People got guards got to guard him and they got to change up their lineup in order to play Brandon Ingram now. Because if Brandon Ingram playing the two and he's 6'9, you got somebody 6'4, 6'5 playing him. You have to change your lineup now. You know what I mean? Somebody got to go play him. So if you got to uh, think about it, if the average person on that starting five is over 6'7, you got you to make some changes because here it is. Now they can just they can, they can, they can attack the paint, they can shoot over their players, they become more dominant. And that's why I said in the day, I trust, I truly believe in this young squad. I'm hoping that the Lakers keep this, this this young squad we got now together, add a couple more pieces. I know we're going to get a superstar eventually. I, I don't know if it's going to be this year. I'm not too sold on uh, LeBron James. But then again, I don't know because the way Cleveland going right now, he might boot out. 
He might boot. Him and PG might go to um L.A. I, like I said, I don't know, man. Matt Johnson might have something thrown up in there, man. That's probably why he gave Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance to them. You know, and you know, put him in an opportunity to get, you know, play playoff, you know, play for a playoff team. Larry Nance go back home. And then it's like, okay, now LeBron probably come at the end of the season. And PG 13 might come. Think about it. OKC struggling. They're in the seventh spot right now and slowly sliding. Ever since Robinson went down, man, they sliding. So you gotta look at it like that. And that's why I said before, if the Lakers would have played pretty good at the beginning of the season, all the little things that they could have worked on. You know, fixed it right then and there. Like I said before, I've been saying over and over again, Brooke Lopez with Julius Randle because Brooke Lopez can hit the jumpers. And I know a lot of people said that him and Zubak can't mesh. Y'all keep it sleeping, man. Zubak is one of them European players, man. Them European players, all of them get hit jumpers. That's their, that's, that's their bread and butter. Zubak can hit jumpers. He just never really took any. He played down low, but he can hit them jumpers he wants to. Now, he might not own over can shoot a three like Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez is hot. But the one thing different between Zubak and Brooke is that Zubak played defense. He might be a little slow in the feet, but he does play defense. Brooke played when he wanted to play. And Zubak will give you rebound. He only had one rebound in this game, but he had 10 points. It didn't matter. They were beating the land up anyway, man. They were blowing him out. So, But anyway, Zubak, plus Zubak can run the floor. floor. That's the difference between him and Brooke. Brooke can run when he wants to, but he don't. He, he, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about it, you know, but I think a lot of them guys right now, Brooke, KCP, them guys thinking like, you know what? I see the Lakers are on or something. Um, you know, I might want to resign back with them. Only problem is that that money is going to be utilized for the, the likes of LeBron James or PG 13 or Boogie Cousin. And that's if we can get those two out of three. And then we can make moves around that. But I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you, man. I'm hoping that uh, we resign Julius Randle, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love LeBron. I love what he brings to the game. And I, I prefer LeBron Pro with PG 13 only because LeBron, you know, he got that that killer that killer instinct. PG 13, I, I can't really call it. I mean, a lot of people might disagree with me, but I can't really call PG 13 with that killer instinct. Um, and I like I said, I think um, I don't know, man. I, I think that you know, if you look at Brandon Ingram uh, shots, Brandon only taking like anywhere between 12 to 16 shots a game, and and averaging 19 points. That's why I say, man, if this guy can hit his free throws, he averaged 25 easy. And y'all wouldn't even think nothing about PG-13. If he averaged, like I said, if he had his free throws, he's only 20, what, 20 years old. Kuzma, I think, what, Kuzma, 22? Jules Randle, 22? Guy's young, man. Lonzo, I think, 19, uh, 20? Yo, that's what I said, man. We got a young squad, man. You just need a veteran here and there and some shooters. That's it. And I really, I really want to say we need shooters now because if you think about it, as, as the season go on, guys like J Josh Hart, Kuzma when he's hot, Lonzo starting to knock him down. Ingram, if he started taking shots, because he, he's still not comfortable, but he started taking shots. We got shooters, and then we picked up IT. I don't know if he's going to be there at, um, at, um, you know, next year, based on the fact that he might be looking for a big contract and also a starting position. And somebody said, I think uh, Chris Borgio said that IT is putting pressure on Lonzo Ball. Get the hell out of here, man. That's Lonzo Ball team, man. Ain't, Magic Johnson not going to freaking put IT over no Lonzo Ball. That's not even going to happen. Lonzo Ball, I think, with we 4 for 4 last night. I think if I'm not mistaken, 13 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Come on, man. And we play like, what, 24 minutes? Come on. Yo, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. Once that dude get his shot down, man, he going to be freaking. And then, and y'all, another thing is, Lonzo making his layups. Remember the beginning of the season, he wasn't even making layups. He's making his layups now. Y'all keep on sleeping on Lonzo, man. That's why I don't listen to outside interference, man. I pay attention to what I see in detail, and I critique it the way I critique it because I want these boys to get better because I really believe that what we got right now can actually is already a dynasty. We just sleeping on them, and once these beasts start waking up and we start utilizing them towards their strength, they will be able to compete with Golden State. They're doing it now. They just they, they, The only thing about it is that they just ain't getting the wins, but they actually are competing with Golden State. I think Golden State probably blew them out, what, twice in the past two years? If I'm not mistaken, but other games, they've even won a couple of them and where they've been in it. So they right there with Golden State. But anyway, man, it was a good freaking game, man. We won three in a row, man. I hope the Lakers keep it up, man. I really believe in them. I hope that you guys believe in them. I know a lot of people, people might think different. It's all good. Remember, your opinion, our, my opinion is two different opinions. Hey, it's like butts. We all have one. But at the end of the day, we still Lakers. We love each other. Hey, y'all be safe out there. Y'all have a blessed one. Take care. I got to go meet my family. Um, Aunt passed away couple days ago so i don't really do funerals but i went to the viewing you know my first time I went to a viewing i know i know this, this off topic went to a viewing and um i don't know but i'm um, great meet up with my family i told them i can't do the funeral i just can't do it because i like to i don't know it's just crazy i'm just i don't know but anyway i love you guys man y'all be safe with that take care have a blessed one man